Hey guys, it's Abby. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to Mount Beauty Airport in Australia. We are here looking at Ant's latest release. This is the CAC, or the Commonwealth Aircraft Corporation, Windjill, which is a bird from Australia. So there you go. Now, this is a trainer aircraft. It replaced the Tiger Moth and came before the Trojan in the Aussie training aircraft uh, world. And it was a homegrown aircraft. Now, it's a two slash three seater. This is the one that will seat in the back of the canopy cockpit area there. Uh, and it served as a trainer. And later on during Vietnam, which of course Australia took part in, as a Ford air control aircraft, a lot like the Bird Dog. Now, about 60 Ford of these were built, and they entered service in 55, and they retired in 1995, so quite a lengthy service. And, uh, yeah, 1994 was the last time they were really used in Aussie uh, Royal, air, Royal Australian Air Force service. And it was, of course, uh, oh no, sorry, it's a Victorian indigenous word, meaning young eagle, windjill, sorry. Which is an alternative spelling of uh, Bungil. Either way, it's, it's an Aussie word. So, like I said, it replaced the Tiger Moth there. And it opted as one of the uh, aircraft for flight training. Basic training, that is. Now, there's about seven of them still flying. 24 are privately owned as well. So, yeah, sorry. 24 privately owned. A lot of them are static. But there's about seven, I believe, flying, it says here. Look onto this list. Which is uh, not bad. Flight characteristics, of course, two slash three seats. It's a very small seat. And it's got a Pratt Whitney Wasp Junior engine, which is a 445 horsepower engine there, nine cylinders. It gets up to a maximum speed of 162 knots, cruises at about a 143. Has an endurance of three and a half hours, so we can look up at about that. Uh, sorry, doesn't actually give me a distance, just a time of flight. So you can interpret that how you want to. Takeoff and landing run to 50 meters is about 1100 feet. So, pretty quick up and down. So, a decent little aircraft. Now, what do we get from Ants? Of course, we get a bunch of liveries here. There's four variants forward air control and trainer. The difference in the actual aircraft is one has kind of smoke grenade launchers simulated on it, so they don't actually do anything. And they have more radios on the right hand side of the cockpit. In the fact version, FAC, I shall say that in case YouTube gets upset with me. And there's a modern version, which is essentially the same as the trainer modern, except the exterior is different. Uh, basically, one has retro radios, one doesn't. One just has a modern navcom and a transponder installed. We're flying that version. Now, what do we get? We get a pop-up GPS. We get a tablet control options. There are customizations in terms of uh, advanced and easy engine simulation for the starter and flooding. Multiple custom pilot options, uh, custom sound, and oil consumption spark club fouling realism. We'll take a look at this in a second, and we'll see how she flies. So I have got the handbook open, because I'm going to try and actually use it for the startup today. And it's a very, very beautifully photorealistic cockpit, which is akin to what Anne's done with a lot of his other aircraft. There's Captain Whiskers joining us as well. I see what, I'm getting uh, quite used to the photorealistic cockpits in MSFS after the uh, heat blur F-14. It does seem to suit this uh, sim quite well. Let's take a look around the outside. Oh. You know what? I didn't start my controller up. That's a good thing, which means it will blurp at me when I try to. So we'll just do this with the arrow keys because we're going to be sensible. So grass is kind of long. makes it look difficult to see a lot of stuff. You know what? We're actually going to go inside first and take a look at a couple of things on the tablet, which is stowed down here with the GPS. Let me grab that. There we go. Now we're going to basically open the canopy for a start. And we're going to go to our second page. Wheel chocks are on. Close and open various hatches and panels on the aircraft. Now some of them are contingent on doors being in certain positions. Let's go take a look outside. So you can open the entire engine cowling, which is quite neat there. Beautiful photoreal texturing from Ant. Got chocks down there. You can probably make them out just, I think, maybe. Yeah. This is the world's, world's worst parking spot for this. You can't see a thing. There you go, chocks. You make them out, there's chocks. That engine's lovely with a two-way prop there. Very photoreal textures on the exterior and interior. But it suits the aircraft. It looks good. It's not overly kind of badly done. Sometimes photoreal can look weird. This has been balanced properly and looks good, so I like it. Let's close all these. All these clothes. Oh, I need to open these first and then... There we go. 
Close those and I can close those. They have to be done in a certain order so you can actually close the thing. Battery door. That should be under here. There we go. Notice the little uh, winding here to kind of lower the battery compartment. Quite cool, isn't it? Very neatly done. I'm going to have a look at the pilot here for a second. And yes, those are ooh woo cat ears. Ooh -woo. Sorry, I had to do it. <coughs> ooh <-woo. laughs> I apologise profusely. I, I do, I don't. Maybe. Let's get rid of those now because that's something I didn't need to see. Go away, cat ears. Thank you. Okay, so pilot options we have male. We have female. She's uh, a bit of a straggly Sheila. We have RAAF, trainee, so with a helmet on. And we have the MSFS default pilot you have chosen. Your uh, co-pilot, I believe, is always an MSFS one. You can hide them in the interior. You can have exterior only and you can show them. So Captain Whiskers can join us in his rightful place. Now, of course, we have the GPS there, as you see here. Uh, we have the controls for all the various things. Our realism mode. Let's go to... Let's go to hard. Let's go to hard. Why not? Let's try and take this thing really serious and see how much we screw it up. Now, uh, persistent fuel and all. Yep, let's do that. Okay, and we'll get this all started as it goes up. Everything else is ready here. Engine start. So, uh, pfft, don't want to click start. We can do parking brakes on and off, master batteries on and off. These are a bit like A2A's uh, options in their tablet. You can set a lot of these features. So, we can see all our details down there. This takes us back to the autopilot. We have a a placeholder autopilot shall we say which at least does the job which is useful to have like aircraft that will simulate this when you have a tablet it's a really cool feature to have so let's try and start the aircraft up so master battery is on parking brake is on it's not is it there we go parking brake is now set one of these ones down here somewhere there we go parking brake's that one so our wheel trucks there we'll... there we go there okay that's on i think it's on Right, fuel cock to on. And where the fuel cock is down here. So our flaps, there's our fuel valve. That's off. That's on. Okay, fuel valve is on. Uh, mags. Mags are on. Okay, uh, fuel boost pump to on. Pressure 2 to 4 PSI. That's reading good for us. Uh, da, 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 I'll put in charges the carburetor. If the boost pump runs for a long period of time, more than a minute, it will flood the carburetor. We stop procedure. Primer, cold engine, six to eight strokes. So, let's do that now. Okay, prime that. We're going to knock off our boost pump as well. Now, my headset's falling off me because for some reason it wants to do that. Slapping everything here. Uh, so we should be going to try and start. Ignition switches need to be on, which I believe is one of these. That's our identity. Looking around for the correct switches in this thing. Our starter should be here. Nope. That's not working. Where's my ignition switch? Is there a separate switch for this? I could well be completely loopy. We're full rich down the fuel. Throttle is cracked here. I don't believe there's a separate one. There appears to be indicating there was a separate ignition. Although, we only have the mags there. Master battery set in its correct positioning. So, windshield demist. We can change that as well. As I look around the cockpit here, I'm trying to follow this as we all go along together. Where's the ignition? I'm going to read the checklist and find out where it is because apparently I'm blind and no matter how many times I try to look at things, I screw it up. Engine starter, we know where that is. Where is it? It doesn't appear to be saying there is one. Well, that's concerning. We'll try with the, uh, it could well be a honeycomb issue, so I'm going to try with the honeycomb starter. And we get a good start. Okay. Most likely a honeycomb starter issue. We're okay. So the engine is started, and we're idle, so we need to be careful with that one for now. So we'll put the tablet away. 
Now I do need to quickly check to see if I can find some speeds uh, for this one. Make sure we don't screw her up on uh, approach because uh, ants aircraft tend to be very realistic when it comes to their behavior in terms of flight characteristics. So we're going to want to be careful with that one. Uh, flaps to take off, we're looking at 12 degrees, that's first notch. For landing, we're looking at third flap. Do not go full, that's 50 degrees, that's too much flaps. So we're going to want to make sure we're on full rich. So we have auto lean, auto rich, and full rich. We're going to be going back to auto rich. So there we go, auto rich. We're set there. Okie dokie dokie, tail wheel, free swivel link or steerable. Mode operations that remove the draw column fully forward or fully. Ah, right. Fully forward is full swivel fully back is steerable. We'll be using that. And otherwise, let's have a look around. There's instrument indications. It's not telling me anything I don't know. Does it give me any more indications in here in the manual? It does not. The manual is very. Oh no, it does actually show here. 70 knots crossing the threshold. Wonderful. We've got the information we need. Okay, so we're going to close the canopy, which by the way is up here. You can scroll wheel or you can just drag, which is what I'm doing there. So window lock, which stops us from doing this. Sound does modify, of course. If you talk about little seats, here's the little seats. They're very baby seats. There's not exactly a ton of room. And of course, this is the one time I've to turn my head tracking on. Because, <laughs> you know, preparing for anything would be far too much organisation for me. So we'll get rid of my controller there. Throw that on the floor. We don't need that. Head tracking is on. We are good to go. So let's get ourselves out of here, shall we? Parking brake disengage. Chocks can be off. There we go. Right, let's get her moving, shall we? Flight controls back into my stomach. There we go. And that gives us a steerable tailwheel. I think... It doesn't seem to be. It seems to be that going forward does it. Okay. I must have misread that because it said forward was free swiveling, but forward seems to be steerable. So I was on the runway here. Notch flaps there. Okay, full rich there. Let's get turned around here onto the runway. Mount Beauty. Great name for an airport, by the way. Australia has some wonderful names. And we'll get ourselves rolling here. Come on. There we go. Very narrow little runway. <laughs> Tiny little place. But more than enough for what we need. Okay. Rock and rolling. Power's on. Got rudder authority. Oh, there we go. Still have my controls forward. Don't want to do that. Okay. Speed's 60. We're lifting off and flying away from the runway. Nice and easy on takeoff. It really peels itself away with the flaps down. Flaps coming up here. Tons of visibility. Absolutely love this. We can see everything we want to. Absolutely mega visibility in this aircraft. Great for touring, I think. And good speed. 145-ish knots. And cruise that's a pretty reasonable cruise speed for a GA type you've got tons of realism you've got features you've got a GPS you've got a standby autopilot system radios and transponder so that's incompatible it's unusual it's a tail dragger it's got a radial with a wasp junior we like wasp juniors there we go nice and easy now we're doing about 70 which is the speed we want to be going over the fence at so I'm a little bit concerned about that. That's why we're going so slowly. How much more power do I need to put in? We're not too high altitude either. She's slowly picking up speed. But we are climbing at about a thousand feet a minute, so that's going to be a factor. There's the dam down below, or the edge of the lake, I should say. We'll do it once around the airport, then we'll come back in. But we'll head down the valley, so we'll come back in on approach. Circuit-wise, that wasn't exactly the right angle we wanted to be at, so we'll head down here. We'll do a turnaround, we'll come back at it. Let's get the nose level down, see how much PG she picks up. Uh, now, you'll note down here, we do have our 
windscreen wipers. And the position you switch this off in is the position they stop in. So be aware, if you want to get them out of the way, you'll need to do that and move them out of the way. So, uh, it's our gyro instrument power there. Didn't actually turn that one on. I should have done. But we have all those now. In terms of tablet, we can also change our windshield to dirty and or clean. So if you want a bit more dirty look to it, you can. And you can turn that off as well, which is a nice feature to include. And we've got radios, of course, there as well. So we can set our radio channels and choose what we want. If we wanted additional ones to what we had. So let's get ourselves turned around here and we'll bring her in for an approach. Bearing in mind that's 70 not indication. There's the lake and there's the airport. For that. Okay. Slow it down here. Ant does make very good aircraft. Texture wise I love this. Model wise I love this. Performance wise it's phenomenal. I'm getting a very excellent FPS and it's systems depth equipped aircraft so that is very good. Um, this is an update from FSX. I need to be clear about that. Now, we're charging 20 euros on uh, Sim Market for this, in equivalent prices. And yes, it is, his own words, a conversion from the FSX version. I believe the windshield was one of the last ones he did. And I will say it looks good. It does look good. It does not look bad at all. But it is an FSX conversion. So it is not a full on, from scratch build for MSFS. I don't think that's a bad thing, but you can tell in places it's come from the FSX days. That's about it. Okay, we're holding about 80 here. We're going to descend down now as we get to this ridge line and make our approach to the airport. Room is ahead of us. Two notches of flaps are in. I believe so. Yes, got two notches there. Okay, turning final here. We'll let our pitch maintain our speed. Actually, we're going to go full flaps here because we've got a bit of a steep approach to take. And we don't want to get too much speed, but 50 degrees flaps is not what I'd want to have otherwise. But this is just enough to bring us down and not gain ridiculous amounts of speed, although we're approaching 100 knots. It's going to be a little bit quick. So I might have to do a pull up and see what happens job here. We're going to descend a bit too much now. And I'm going to bring the nose upsy daisy over the ridge line there. I'm floating way too far on this runway. That's not going to work. That's my own bad. I'm going to have to redo that approach. Okay, we're going to put the nose down here. We're quite slow. There we go. Our flaps are clean. Yeah, way too steep an approach. So we'll bring her around and we'll do an approach from a bit lower down. <laughs> this isn't quite as silly. She's her handling is predictable. It's it's predictable, it's well behaved, and doesn't do anything wild to me. And the visibility is phenomenal. I love this. It really does have so much you can see. We haven't of course sourced fallen foul of the entrance systems depth yet, but it has functioned. Everything's worked as we intended, which is good and compass up there is working okay all right slow it down here we've got our speed so we're going to put our first notch of flaps in keep this altitude we'll extend past the lake there until we get to this red hill line trim our cells level here. A bit more throttle there. Props full fine. Let's get turning here. We are one notch in. Okay. Very gentle. Very well behaved. Very placid at this stage of flight way too slow speed up and i'm not going to put more flaps out like this ok 
Okay, we should ditch or gain some of the speed as we turn, so I'm going to drop that second stage of laps. I'm going to turn us to final. Watching my speed, keeping that up. We're about 7 2, so we want to be over the threshold, so speed increasing. Let the nose drop down. Okay, maintaining that 70. I'm off course completely. I've screwed this up horribly. Let the nose drift us down. Maintain the speed. That dike makes for a bit of an interesting approach. Oh, little bump, a little jump, a little hop and a skip. And wheels are down. Key controls back. Flaps coming up. Electrical, but they come up pretty quickly. And we're good. Whoa, hello. <laughs> so I, I hopped a little bit. Uh, she's a bit unusual because she bleeds speed quite quickly. And maybe that's the fixed gear, I'm not sure. But she bleeds speed very quickly. And she's got a very... There's, there's a lot of sensitivity to the pitch, but it's not snappy. So she has a lot of, uh, of elevator control, I think is probably the best way to describe it, but not pitch sensitive. It is not as sensitive like the uh, pilot experience mall is, but you have a ton of elevator authority to apply. So you need to be very much aware of what you're applying in terms of the elevator. Otherwise, um, roll is very gentle. Yaw is very gentle. Um, the nose is very it's short, but it's, it's big. Seem to be aware of that. There we go. Let's get taxi back to where we started. There we go. Cut the fuel. There we go. Parking brakes and shocks. What do we think of the wind chill from Ants? It's an Ants aircraft. If you like realism, you like weird, you like a bit of Australian. I'd say it's a no-brainer in terms of function and ability to play with toys and candy features and just general enjoyability from custom pilot models, opening hatches, systems simulation from radios and GPSs and autopilots. It has got something for everybody. It has a function to allow everyone to feel like they have the aircraft experience they want. Do you want a pilot inside the cockpit? Do you not want a pilot inside the cockpit? Do you want a co-pilot in the cockpit? Do you not want one? Do you want systems depth? Do you want to have assistance? Do you want to have features that would be used in a modern aircraft, like a GPS? Do you want to have an autopilot so you can step away from the computer on a longer flight? Because it's a computer game. Yes, you can have that. Not want to use it? Don't use it. For the price, a fantastically well-featured add-on. Uh, very good price. It is an up a conversion, according to Ant. I suspect it is natively materialed, but with the way he does textures, you can't tell, really. Well made. I like this. Would recommend. And it's Aussie and they're fun. See ya.